So we have a neat little tool here made by the American Power Tool Company. Got the manual for it right here. The AeroSwedge SX1. But who needs manuals? We're just going to go right ahead and use this thing. I'm joking. I've actually gotten some instruction on how to use this. It's a neat little tool. And so I turn it on right now. It's got the blinking light. Tells me we're in the uh, tightening mode. It's set up for 450 degrees of rotation. We can actually change that. And 450 degrees being one and one quarter turns, which is swedge lock standard for this tube fitting size. We can actually go up and down with the number of degrees. So if we were doing a special uh, type of fitting or a different size of fitting, we may need a different number of degrees. we get out of that. So we're in tightening mode. As you can see, it's got this uh, clamp here that holds the fitting in place. It also has a rotary jaw that's going to grab the nut on the fitting and turn it at 450 degrees. The purpose of this device, the genesis of it, is made for zero gravity work in space, where people on the space shuttle, for example, might need to tighten a tube fitting. This device holds the tube fitting in place in such a way that there's no torque imparted to the user, so the astronaut doesn't get thrown around the tube. Uh, it just uh, puts it in place and holds the trigger down, and it does the rest of the tightening on its own. I want to demonstrate briefly how this works. We're going to take a half inch tube fitting right here, swedge lock tube fitting, and a short piece of half inch tube, slide it in place, and make sure the tube's all the way bottom and that it's finger tight. So now we take this, slide it into the tool, and if we try to slide this forward, it's not going to quite catch. So what we have to do here is bump forward until it catches. So now it's all set up and it's ready to do its 450 degrees of rotation. Now because it is programmed for that amount of rotation, all we have to do is hit the trigger button here and it does the rest. You can hear the motor laboring as it exerts torque. It also backs off just a bit so you can pull this back, get the fitting out, and there's your tight fitting. So it's properly done exactly the amount of rotation that swedge lock requires. So there's no need to gauge the fitting at this point. You know it's done properly. As you can see, my hand wasn't even on the tool. So there's no torque whatsoever imparted to the user. It's a neat, neat device. I can send this thing back to the home position by touching the trigger one more time. Of course, you don't want to do that with the, the fitting in there engaged because, of course, it would loosen off the fitting. But uh, that brings it back to the home position where now I could slide the fitting in and out like that. The other attachments for it, we have adapters here that will work for smaller tube fittings, for example, uh, one quarter inch instead of one half. We also have an adapter here that works as a tube cutter. So we can take this and actually cut a piece of tubing. I'll show you how to do that briefly. Slide this on. And then we have to take this special attachment here, which is a roller clutch. We'll put the tube in here briefly so you can see how it works. It lets the tube spin one way freely, but then it grabs the other direction. So it's a one-way clutch that works on any round object. So we need to insert that in here as well. It's a bit of a trick to pull this back, insert it in. Now, of course, when we're cutting tubes, we have no need for a one and one quarter turn requirement. We just turn and turn until the thing's cut through. So what I'm going to do is set the tool in a different mode. Hold this button down for a couple seconds goes into cutter mode. So now I take my tube, I set it in place. There we go. See, that's where I wanted to have it cut. Bring that down gentle like that. Now when I touch the trigger, it's just going to keep on turning full torque, turning and turning and turning until I touch the trigger again, and it will be done. Another feature this thing has 
is notice there's a number here. I'm at number 25, and it tells me degrees of rotation. It gives me a time and a date stamp. Every single action I do in this tool, it archives as memory. So that was action number 25. I've been playing with this thing this afternoon. I've done 25 different things when I got it. So that includes previous cuts and previous swedges and uh, backing off and going forward. So what it does, it maintains an audit trail of actions. So whoever the technician is that did the work with this, all of their actions are stored in memory, which can then be downloaded to a system uh, for archival. This is really important for aerospace. NASA loves it because they want to be able to tag every fitting that's been swedged and know when it was done, how many degrees rotation, and all that stuff. So if there's ever a question, uh, let's say you had a failed tube fitting, they can go back in the records and find out what exactly was done and maybe find out a reason for that failure. But of course, swedge lock fitting would never, ever fail, right? <laughs> so we do this properly with a, a tool. The idea is it's going to archive the information for us and um, just keep a track record of everything that's been done. It's a neat, neat technology.